say these words with authority and power. I am a winner. To reflect what God says about me. My faith is built in God's word. I can do all that God says I can do. Hallelujah. And we clap for the word of God as it comes to minister us. Man, you can do better than that. This is for Jesus. Worship team, come on, give a better clap for the worship team. Then give a better clap for the Lord in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Wow, please stay with your mic, sir. We might uh, just dance. Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Wow, before you sit down. Allow me to honor our pastors, Pastor Don in absence and Pastor Nancy with us. Come on, give the Lord a clap for that. We bless the Lord for you. We do not take it for granted. You know God sends men to lift other men. Amen? You're looking for a lifting and you don't want people around you fall as Anna. It will not come. <laughs> Angels won't lift you. You need men. Amen? So we bless the Lord for you. This, uh, our pastors have been such a mighty influence in our lives, as for me and my wife. You know, uh, we do not say it. We don't, we don't make noise too much. We are very quiet people, me and my wife, for those who know us. But uh, we bless the Lord for you and your husband. We bless the Lord. You know, these people are there. These people trained us in marriage and they were our best couple, by the way. And we didn't know we were going to start church together. There was nothing. Hmm? It's, it's just one of those things. We bless the Lord for you. Amen. Let's honor our bishop, our reverend, Reverend Julian Kula, for answering the call. There wouldn't be Papa Santa, Rock West, you know, if he didn't answer the call. So we bless the Lord for him. You can have your seats. Ah, before you sit down, goja, goja. Hey, there's one person I can't forget to appreciate. Here to Tasimama. Come on, we catch in Tasimama. Tafadali. Please help me appreciate my wife. This woman. Rojo Pastor Lisa Palikwa na sema. You see something nice, then you think they, they were born like this, eh? This woman has polished this man. I, I remember I had one jeans trouser. My wife never loved it. She was like, when we started dating, she was like, this thing you have to throw it away. <laughs> you know, man, eh? You keep on a kitumoja unaiba January to December. Hmm? So when you see some glory, there is someone who's working. Amen. Yeah, she's the one who makes ministry easy for me. Amen. I appreciate you, baby. Now you can have your seats. Amen. Amen. Wow, I love the power of the Lord is in this place. Amen. Amen. Now, next month, uh, this is month of November. Let me confirm. Today was the last day of the month, eh? Yes. Eh. Send me next month and I'll learn you next month. Uh, we'll start a series on stewardship. We'll be teaching on stewardship. Invite all your friends, your neighbors, your enemies if you have some. You know, I don't know. Me, I don't know my enemies, but I pray for them. Maybe Kunawatu and Anichuki and Hawaniambi, I don't know them. Hmm? But I pray for them, but I don't know them. Invite everyone you can invite who will be teaching and learning on stewardship, on the resources that God gives you, on the things that God entrusts you with. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Let me take advantage. These guys have not given me a clock. So, I promise, I'm Takesha. You know, some of you might be like, who you left us here two hours later? Uh, I call, I, in, in conclusion, so, please, let's keep time. Service starts at, uh, what time? Yes, let's keep time. Let's come early. Let's come expectant. Um, let's uh, prepare our hearts to receive. Also, in the month of November, we'll be hosting our granddaddy, eh? for lack of better words. Eh? Uh, he's an apostle in this land. Amen? You know, sometimes, you, you know, there are people with titles, but they have no authority. But then there are people with no titles, but they have the authority. Eh? They command the authority. Amen? You need to learn to design. Eh? We'll be hosting our bishop, Bishop J.B. Masinde. That's on the 14th of November. Now let me tell you guys. Me, I want us to do something crazy. I have not discussed with anyone. This is off the fly. Can that week, can we fast? Can we fast as a church? Okay, if you are a member of Rockwest, maybe they have visitors here and there. They are not speaking. Can we fast? Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Let's take three days of fasting. Amen? Prepare your hearts. Uh, let's do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We will communicate on our WhatsApp. Let's fast that week. Let me tell you, when you encounter graces, don't just take them for granted. Yeah? Reverend Julian has preached it. He has spoken it here on this pulpit. Grace sits on men for men. And there are things you prepare for. You just don't meet graces and you're just like, you know, nimekujatu, yeah? tokelezetu. Ni service. No. Let's prepare. Something will happen in the realm of the spirit. Amen. Our lives will never be the same again. Amen. It is moments like that that define life. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, uh, next Sunday, we are starting our teens service. Where is Mugure? I saw her somewhere. Stand up. That's our teens pastor. <clears throat> we see in the spirit before we manifest physically. Ah, I have another pastor here I'm about to introduce. So, if you have teenagers, you have neighbors who have teens who are seated in the house, carry them on Sunday. Yeah? We've been desiring to have this to start and finally... The moment has come. Amen. You heard about cross points. Today I feel leo nikona asken kona kaucho kozi kidogo. The unction is functioning. Amen. You heard about cross points. Titus Zimama. This is our cross point leader. If you don't belong in one right now. Yeah, let's celebrate him. This man is great. I know he doesn't like talking up here. I was trying to force him this week to be with me up here. Nikishiko na Holy Ghost to Juta Kuapa na Mimi. Already a Menishika, so <laughs> intercede further. But uh, this is Titus. He's in charge of cross points. If you don't belong to one, see him after service. Tell him, I live in this area and I don't have one. This is my number 0725. Put me in a group. We want everyone to belong to a small group, it will help you. It is important. I have not met anyone who was in a small group that regretted. I have not. Maybe it's just me. Titus, you can have your seats. Hey, and we have Festus next to him, who is in charge of men. Where are the men? Okay. Let's say Ahu. One, two, three. One, two, three. Bas. We are meeting next Sunday also. We are starting the Captain's Fellowship next Sunday, very early in the morning, 8 a.m. Patane mapema, to neno la buwana na tuombe. Amen? I feel, I feel like we have transitioned to another level as a church. <coughs> Excuse me. And this month of November, something is going to happen. 
very different in this house. Amen? Now, I've done... Pro- hey! Charity! <laughs> Please address this thing. <laughs> add, me, add me some 10 minutes. What has just happened right there? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, because of time today, we are going to go mad. I want us to read the word of God. I want us to read a few scriptures. I want us to start in the book of Revelations, chapter 1, from verse 5. I want to honor some other people. If you are a co-worker, lift up your hand wherever you are. If you are a co-worker, that means you serve in a department, you are somewhere. Just lift up your hand. See, easy queen, I'm gone. Any kujaribu queen, I'm gone. India queen, I'm gone. Yes, there. Come on. If you're not lifting up your hand, celebrate those guys. Those are the people who make service happen Sunday to Sunday. Amen. This church, very soon, all of us are going to be co workers. Amen. No, Reverend Julian once did this, and everyone thought this man is crazy. He called all of us co workers. Then we ended up being. We were 360 co-workers. So all of us here are going to be co-workers. Then we'll, we, bring the, we bring the harvest. Amen? Hallelujah. Revelations chapter 1 from verse 5. I'll be reading from King James Version and Amplified. This is, give me King James, old King James. Let us read together. Okay, let's start again. You are not ready. One, two, go. Next verse. Amen. Revelations chapter 5 from verse 7. Give it to me in Amplified. One, two, go together. Mm -hmm, That's it. Let me read now. <laughs> I think we, we went somewhere else. Let me read from verse 8. And they sang a new song. Uh, verse, oh, from verse 8. And now, and when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders of the heavenly Sanhedrin prostrated themselves before the Lamb. Each was holding a harp, uh, a lute or guitar, And they had golden bowls full of incense, fragrant spices, gums for burning, which are the prayers of God's people. Verse 9. And they sang. Let me read what I have here. It's a different version slightly, but let's keep that. And they sang a new song of glorious redemption, saying, Worthy and deserving are you to take the scroll and to break the seals, for you are slain, sacrificed, and with your blood you purchased people for God from the tribe, from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them to be a kingdom of royal subjects and priests to our God, and they will reign on the earth. And you have made them to be a kingdom, a royal race. First Peter chapter 2, amplified version from verse 4 says, come to him, then rise the, the risen king, the risen Lord, as to a living stone which men rejected and threw away, but which is choice and precious in the sight of God, you believers, like living stones, are being built up into a spiritual house for a holy and dedicated priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ. 
But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a special people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies, and that's the wonderful deeds, virtues, and perfections of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you are not a people at all, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. I want to talk about kings and priests. The few scriptures we've read right there talk about what Jesus did. And he says he purchased us with his blood. That's the first scripture we read in chapter 1 from verse 5. And to him who loved us and washed our sins with his own blood and made us kings and priests to our God. Tell your neighbor you are a king. Tell your neighbor you are a priest. It doesn't matter if you feel like, doesn't matter if you feel like you qualify or not, but as long as you believe in Christ Jesus and you have been washed by the blood of Jesus, you are a king and you are a priest. Amen? Amen? In the olden days, kings were anointed with oil. But in this dispensation of grace, kings are bought with blood. Amen? Kings have been bought with blood. In the olden days when the prophets were anointing kings, what they did is they took oil and went and anointed. And I know all of us know the story of David, how he was anointed. And the scripture has said he has made us to be a kingdom, royal subjects to, and priests to our God. And they will reign. That's the second portion we read of uh, uh, Revelation chapter 5. And they will reign on the earth. God has made you a king and a priest for one reason. That you may reign on the earth. That you may reign on the earth. Now, do you know there are some things that are given, but necessarily they are not received? Do you know something can be given, but not received? God gave an answer to Daniel's prayer, but Daniel had a delay he didn't receive. The scripture says the day you prayed, your answer, before you prayed, your answer was sent. But he had to fast for 21 days. To receive his answer. Though things are given, they are not always received. This is the reality of the realm of the spirit. There are many people who have received, but they do not have evidence of whatever has been given. Amen? So there, there is a reason, there is a process to receiving. Sometimes you have to contend for that which has already been given to you. It does not mean it does not belong to you. It belongs to you, but you have to contend for it. Though it is true that you have been given, have you actually received in your life? Have you actually received? Let me ask you. It's a moment to think. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10, a few scriptures of some things that have been given and yet not received. The Bible says in, from verse 5, uh, There is an evil I have seen under the sun, like an error which proceeds from the ruler. The folly is set in many exalted places and in great dignity, while the rich sit in humble places. The rich here doesn't mean those who have money only. The rich is those who have wealth. Wealth is not money. People who are wealthy in different currencies. The Bible has seven things that are better than money. Yeah? One of them is a good name. Praise the Lord. It says a good name is better than money. You can trade on a good name without having money. Amen? That's just one example. Folly is set in many exalted places and in great dignity while the rich sit in humble places. Verse 7, I have seen slaves riding on horses and princes walking like slaves on ground. The writer of this scripture was giving a reality he had seen. These people were princes, but they were walking. 
but there were slaves riding on horses. These are things that are realities in the earth. That though these men have been made princes, they were not trying to be. They were already. But they were walking when slaves were riding on horses. In Psalms 82, the Bible says, this is one of my favorite scriptures. For those who have known me for a while, probably you have heard me preach on this. The rulers do not know, verse 5, nor do they understand. They walk on in darkness of complacent satisfaction. All the foundations of the earth, the foundation, the, foundation, the, the fundamental principles of the administration of justice are shaken. I said you are gods. Indeed, all of, all of you are sons of the Most High. Stop there. This scripture is saying the rulers don't know and they don't understand. So they walk on. They are ruling, but they are walking on in darkness. They have no knowledge, neither understanding. Sometimes there are people in authority without knowledge and understanding. Amen? I thought Kenya would be like, amen. I am sure, you are, I am sure the minute I said that, you thought of someone. It's, I'm not creating a fact. Yeah? They are in rulership. They have taken position, but they are lacking knowledge and understanding. They walk on in darkness. They, this is, they have complacent satisfaction. They are satisfied in their complacency, where they are. Yeah? And it says the foundational principles are, are shaken. What are the foundational principles? Administration of justice. Everyone in leadership. Let me tell you, kingship is for administration of justice. It's to make sure people get what is rightfully theirs. It's to make sure people get what they should get. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. That's, 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 that's the, op the office of a king. The king creates an atmosphere or a place where people can receive that which is justly theirs. Amen? So, he says these rulers are walking in error and in darkness. They are complacent and satisfied in wherever they are. And the foundations of, are broken, which is administration of justice. And he says, you are God. Indeed, all of you are sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you will die like men and fall like one of the princes. Now, when you hear scriptures say nevertheless, it means it was not supposed to be so. Is that true? Yeah? He says you are God. Children of the Most High. Are you a child of God? Then you are a God, based on that scripture. This is the reason why they wanted to stone Jesus. Because Jesus said, my father. Then they told him, this, those guys were smart. But they had, they were smart in decoding what Jesus is saying, but they could not catch the revelation. Authority is not in the letter, it's in the revelation of the letter. In this situation, there are things that have been given, but people are not enjoying them. Sons of God are doing, dying like mere men. I love one, one version that says, you are children of God, but ye die like mere men. So there is a way mere men die. You're not supposed to die like that. Amen? That's why it says Abraham was gathered with his fathers. So if you follow men of God who have lived for God, they don't just die suddenly. Some people sit down and they rest and they say, I want to do this and this and that. Then let me rest. They take a break. They decide to go home. There is a way children of God, are, even your death is designed. Amen? It's not accidental. That's why you should refuse some things. I told you some things are given, but they are not always received. Just because it's available doesn't mean you have accessed, you have accessed it. These are areas that show you that... There are things that you need to contend for. God always institutes some things so as to guide the people and empower them. In 1 Samuel, we find people who were trying to establish something. And I want, to, I want us to talk about being kings. In the book of 1 Samuel, this is the place the children of Israel first encountered a king. From chapter 12, 
from verse 1, this is what he says. And this was uh, Samuel reading. Uh, just put it on amplified. I'm reading an amplified version, but it's a bit different. But when you saw Nahash, king of the Ammonites, had come against you, you said to me, this is the children of Israel he's addressing, no, but a king shall reign over us. The children of Israel went to a battle. And when they were in the battle, they saw the other team was being led by a king. And the guys were like, no, you have to give us a king. They went to Samuel. You have to give us a king. Although, Samuel continues to say, although the Lord your God was your king. Who was king in Israel? Who was king in Israel? I know we are learning Latin. Simu respond, Pidogo. Who was king in Israel? God was king over Israel up to that point. And Saul is telling them, because you went and saw another army being led by a king, now you want a king. And many of us believers were in that position. We see others doing something, we are like, man, even me I want. God I want. Father I want. Huh? You saw someone in a nice shoe, you are like, Jehovah. I want. And sometimes it is not the thing you need for your season. Or it is not the thing that God has ordained for you. Amen? So they told Samuel, you have to give us a king. Verse 19, he says, then all the people, we're jumping all the way to verse 19. Then all the people said to Samuel, I want you to understand something. They asked for a king, but they thought that was the thing they needed. They needed a leader. That's what they thought. But God, at that time, was always leading them. God had brought them out from Egypt, and he was their leader. He, spoke, he told them, this is the strategy. Go this way. Do this. They found Jericho. They're like, Father, what do we do? Go around this. He gave them instruction. He was their king. But they wanted someone they can see, someone they can relate with. And in this situation... Uh, verse 19, Samuel is telling them, then all the people, after Samuel spoke, now they are responding, and all the people said to Samuel, pray to the Lord your God for your servants so that they will not die, for we have added to all our sins and evil to ask for a king for ourselves. They realized what they did was not supposed to be theirs. And because they had asked, not that having a king was wrong, because they had asked what was not in God's will, it was an evil. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Is it a hard word? Am I sinking too much? Hmm? They asked for the prophet to pray for them. Because they had done an evil by asking for a king. But they were not repenting. They were not saying, we don't need a king anymore. They were like, just pray for us, but we will keep the king. <laughs> How many children of God are like that? Father, I want. Ah, that was not for you. Ay, Father, give me. Give me. Even when he's like, okay. You're like, hey, thank you. I know it was wrong, but, you know, this is what they were doing. They asked, and Samuel said to the people, do not be afraid. You have indeed done all this evil, yet do not turn away from me, from following the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. You must not turn away, for, they, for then you would go after futile things which cannot profit or rescue because they are futile. Amen? These people, because of a desire of having a leader, he's telling them, do not turn away from following the Lord. Many believers, I think in this season of COVID, men have found ourselves there. And the scripture is giving a warning right there. That when you turn away from seeking the Lord, you end up seeking futile things. You end up seeking futile things. That's why our gaze, our concentration has to be on God. In every season, at every time, whether we are high or we are low, 
He's giving them a warning. Do not, even now that you have seen, even when you fall into sin, man, say, wake up and say, Jay, Jehovah, I am still your child. Father, I come back. Forgive me, Lord, but make sure you return. Don't be like, hey, Leo, I don't feel like reading the word. You know, today he spoke badly. You know, today, seek the Lord. Fix your gaze on Jesus. And verse 22, he says, the Lord will not abandon his people. The Lord will not abandon his people for his great name's sake, because the Lord has been pleased to make you a people for himself. This is what the Lord does not do. The Lord has never abandoned his people. Are you a child of God? Even when you feel like things are not working, God is still there. Even when you feel lonely and no one seems to be responding, God is there. I don't know if you're in those places when there's, there is such a demand over your life and you're feeling confused. God is there. <laughs> Amen? God is there. And Samuel is telling the children of Israel, just because you asked for a king and it was your own will and it was your own reasoning, it was your own mind, just focus on following the Lord. Don't even when you have erred, if as a child of God you have erred anywhere and you feel like, I don't know if I'm accepted, this is your word, follow after God. Praise the Lord. Amen? If you are on drug addiction, when you're high on drugs, tell God, Lord, remember me. You know, you know sometime back I used to live in Nimuru and I used to take... Uh, the Matatus, I used to live uh, very late. There is one guy who was always in the Matatu preaching, and this guy was always drunk. This guy was drunk. And you know, sometimes you are thinking, hmm, and the guy would enter the Matatu and he would be, ah, you know, and he used to preach from <laughs> Nairobi all the way to Limuru. He, he couldn't keep quiet. But thank God he was still pre preaching. One day he will be a preacher in Jesus' name. I pray for his soul that the Lord may send his word. Even when you are in that condition and you don't feel like he's working, still stick to the Lord. Amen? Amen? I don't know whose word that is. And uh, Samuel says, Moreover, as for me, verse 23, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you, but I will instruct you in the good and right way. This was the era of kingship, that men who are children of God saw something, saw a king leading men, and they admired it, and they wanted to join it. But God is a good God. He turns even the mistakes to be good things. Amen? God is a good God. God took that situation. He said, you guys chose for yourself a king. I have been your king. He didn't say no. He said, it's okay, enjoy your king. But when Samuel anointed Saul to be king and Saul fell, God said, I will redeem this thing. He anointed David. And he told him, your kingdom will be forever. This is the era of kingship that men desired it, but God decided to use it. Amen? Amen. God decided that he can correct every error. It doesn't matter what you have done. God can correct your error. In 2 Samuel verse 7, it says, But my loving kindness and mercy will not depart, from verse 5, from him as I took it from Saul, whom I removed from before you, your house, royal dynasty, and your kingdom will endure forever before me. Your throne will be established forever. He was speaking to David. It's only God who has the ability to remove men and to establish men. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I know we are going to election next year. But let me tell you the revelation. It's not campaigns. There are people with power and authority to appoint men in the spirit. And make men sit. Amen? God has given that authority to the church. God has the power to appoint a man. But he has de devolved his authority to the church. And here he is saying, I removed Saul. 
Who, who sent Samuel to ordain Saul? It was God. God told Samuel. In fact, God created a situation. The donkeys left. So Saul went looking for donkeys. But in the process, he was meeting with Samuel to anoint him king. And God, the same God told Samuel, ordain David. I have rejected Saul. Because Saul was man's choice. But I have picked a man. Let me tell you. <laughs> you would rather fail in God's choice. Yeah? than succeed in your own choice. You would rather fail in God's choice. Let me tell you, many of us, God directs us on what to do. It, it doesn't, you know, you are, sometimes you are like, hey, Connie, God is unfair. Saul had two mistakes. One mistake is he went to sacrifice in the temple, which he was not supposed to do. And Samuel gave him a warning and told him, you, eh? be careful, lest this kingdom be taken away from you. After God had told him, you will reign over Israel, your household will reign over Israel forever. He told him, be careful, lest this kingdom, kingdom be taken from you. The second time, he goes to fight and he was told, destroy the Amalekites utterly. And he decides to spare some fat rams eh? and bulls. His reason was, I will sacrifice to the Lord. He was not like, hey, he's in Yamachoma, he's in Akapoa. No, he was not seeing how they will have a bash. He was like, we'll sacrifice to God. But God was like, mm -mm. because you have disobeyed me, I have rejected you. But David, God's choice, that's what human choice does. Even if your choice seems to be right, follow God's choice. Because you will be alone with your choice. But when God gives you his choice, he will redeem. You know, David killed a man. David slept with a man's wife. But still God said, I will have mercy over him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Am I talking? Now, at this point God is telling David, I will establish your kingdom. Forever and ever. How? Because Jesus would sit on that king. On that seat. From the lineage of David. Amen? It is God who established David. It is not because David qualified. You are a king because God has called you to be one. Stop trying to qualify yourself. It's not anything you do that will make you a king. Praise the Lord. It's not your dress code. You see, David was in the backside of the wilderness, grazing sheep. His brothers were in the army. Well, look at gym. The way those guys must have been, eh? Must have gone to the gym. That's why the prophet, when he looked, though he had the spirit of God upon him, he saw, he was like, must be this one. God said, no. It must be this one. God said, no. Ah, the next one. It must be this one. When the last one came, he didn't say, must be this one. He said, the Lord has said, it is you. When God qualifies you, it does not matter if you look like the qualifications, if you fit the part, if you talk the talk, it does not matter. That's why we should seek God's qualification and stand upon God's qualification. Because many times, we want to qualify ourselves. We want to choose our soul and not let God give us our David. Amen? Now, in this situation... Hey, this sermon will not end today. We will, today we are keeping time, amen? That's the one thing I want us to do, is keep time. Now, David, if you think about it, was ordained how many times as king? Three times. David was ordained? David was God's choice. God's choice was ordained three times to take kingship. Saul was man's choice. Saul was on day in one. The next day, everyone was like, King Saul, our king. Let me tell you, sometimes the processes of God will baffle you. They will baffle you. God has said, I will establish you. Then five years later, you are like, God, are you establishing me? It seems now I'm going lower. It's not even, even where I was, it's not where I am. 
Even the people I knew these days don't relate with me. You know, I had connections. I thought, this, this guy, is, God can use this guy. They are not there anymore. These days, they don't even pick your call. <coughs> God has a process and a way that will baffle you. David, God's choice, was ordained three times. The first time when Saul came to his father's house. The second time when he became king over Judah. The third time when he took kingship over Israel. The choice of God had to be ordained three times, though God had spoken it. I told you there are things that are given, but you have to contend for. Praise the Lord. You have to fight for them. They will not just be handed to you. Now, you need to understand, there are things that look like they are still there, but God has rejected them. When God ordained David, when God rejected Saul, he ordained David the first time. Saul was still in place as king, but he was only a placeholder. God forbid for you to be a placeholder. Saul was just holding the seat for the right king to mature. Just because people are in positions, don't worry. They just might be holding position for the right guy to come. Amen? I pray it is not so in your life. I will not be a position holder in Jesus' name. Hey, I refuse to be a placeholder for someone. I refuse. In Jesus' mighty name, I will follow my God. Saul, so, all this time, he was on the throne. He was just holding space. Because the real king was ordained, though he was a young man. And the Bible says, though the heir, when the heir is a child, he is under tutors and teachers. You cannot take authority when you are a child. God has called you kings, but if you remain an infant in the spirit, you will never experience the kingship. You will never take hold of what is yours. Praise the Lord. In the book of 2 Samuel, uh, chapter 2, uh, the scripture says, And after this David inquired the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. And David said, to which shall I go up? And he said, to Hebron. Verse 2. So David went up there with his two wives. Uh, that one, you can read for yourself. The Jezreite <laughs> and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, of Carmel. Verse 3. And David brought up his men who were with him each one with his household, and they dwelt in the town of Hebron. Where was David coming from? David was anointed of the Lord, but David was living in the wilderness. He was in caves, though he was anointed. Just because you are in places that no one seems to recognize you and see you, it does not mean God has not anointed you. Just because you're on the backside of the wilderness, this is the time he was going to take over kingship in Judah. Yeah? But let me tell you, he was living in caves with God's anointing. But the anointing was sharpening him. I know most of us, we hear men, when we tell you you are a king, you are like, mm, your scripture ni poor. <laughs> you know, it's, it's God's word, so... We can't refuse it. Sounds good, sounds good. But then in, you, even your subconscious is telling you, boss, <laughs> you know your reality. You know it's telling you something else. You know your reality. Let me tell you, it does not matter where you are. You know sometimes here we tell you guys to serve. And sometimes it sounds like some of the things we are preaching is rocket science. I was telling my wife the other day, in fact we were recounting it, I think, last night also. There is a day I spent a whole service under the stage in Papa Center on Mombasa Road when service was going on because there was a cable that kept tripping, a power cable. Now you see me today preaching up here and you're like, I, I, I was under the stage when the sermon was happening. 
with a knife because I didn't even have a screwdriver. Maze, trying to fix a cable. And guys, Maze, I remember praise and worship. Hannah, VOP on the stage. Kwanza, you can hear them jumping. <laughs> <laughs> guys, you are not forgotten wherever you are. You're not forgotten. It does not matter if men remember your name or they never mention your name. God, when he says it is your time, it is your time. I was just down there sharpening the grace of God for my life. I was serving. Huh? And then guys leave church, they're like, that service was wonderful. Me, I go home to my wife and I'm like, hey, baby, I'm tired. I'm tired. Huh? I just want to sleep. I don't even feel like talking today. <laughs> We, we've come from the same service. Same service. But one guy was at the stage making sure this thing is going to work. Eh? The other guys were seated enjoying the sermon. It does not matter where you are. Today I'm on stage. I'm not under the stage. <laughs> David was coming from the backside of the wilderness. Yeah? Let me tell you, the power that backs you will decide what you will receive. You see, though he was in a cave, the power that was backing him was the power of God. David in that cave, he had a chance to kill Saul and take kingship, but he didn't. In fact, at one point, Saul was fighting, he decided, let me go help myself in a cave. The place where he went to help himself, David was hiding here. To the place where David cut a piece of his cloth. Akakata. Then he told, the, the men of David were with him in the cave. They were like, can we, with this, God has given us the opportunity. Let's finish this guy. <coughs> told them, no. The Lord, the Lord has refused. It is not our place. He is still God's anointed, though he is rejected. Don't fight for positions. I know most of us are like politics. Ay, sh- Squeezing ourselves in between. Hmm? Trying to take position. That's not the place of the children. Seek God and do your part. Seek God and do your part. If God has called you a king, he will establish your kingship. It's not your effort. David would have said, man, finally, this guy rejected God anyway. Let's kill the dude and take over. David fought, fought. There is a story in Psalm, when, when David was about to take kingship, when Saul died, you think, that, you think it's because Saul was just alive. When Saul died, David, now you think he will just walk in and take kingship. Ah, finally, the guy who was occupying space has left. Another man called Abner decided, this is the opportunity to position myself. And how do I position? I will not take kingship. I will pick, eh? is, it, is it Ishibosheth, hmm? the son of Saul, and position him as king to the people. Then I can have authority. Because the man didn't have authority. It is Abner who say, was pushing him to take position. Even then they had to fight. David had to contend to take his rightful position as king. You are a king, but I don't know if you have the battle. Do you have the fight enough to take what is yours? The Bible says we fight not against flesh and blood. I'm not fighting against someone, you know? There's someone here seated thinking, man, even me, I want to be a pastor in this church. I'm going to fight these people. (laughs) I'm going to pull them down. To a pack of my top and pack of my My friend, You will lose miserably. The good fight is in prayer. The good fight is in prayer. Seek the Lord. Let him direct you. Amen? Might be in greater positions than where we stand, yet you admire where people stand. David was the greatest king of all. Then God, he didn't refer to Saul as his example because Saul went before him. Stop referring to men. Refer to God. Amen? Amen. Oh. In the book of Revelation, chapter 17, 
verse 14 says, This shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Called and chosen and faithful. Even Jesus in Revelation has to contend. I know Jesus is seated in all authority, but that scripture right there has just said, and this shall make war with the Lamb. And the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. Not why Jesus overcomes them. Because of the position that God has given him. Praise the Lord. Because of the position that the Father, he overcomes them because he is. You overcome because of what God has made you to be. Not because of what you do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Even Jesus contends. Even Jesus contends. Now, I have very few minutes. I want to share something very short on priests. That's about kingship. I want us to take some time at the end and pray. The scripture right there has said you have to contend. Now, we know about the priests. I'll just skip a lot of stuff and go right to the ending because of time. I want us to keep time. The greatest work of the priest in the house of God was to give offerings. The Bible has said you are kings and priests. In the New Testament, there are many kinds of offerings we do. In the Old Testament, they used to give a sin offering, and that was the greatest job of the priest. These days, the Bible says we do not offer the sacrifice of bulls and goats because Jesus gave his blood for us. But then the Bible demands that we give certain offerings. The first one is in Romans chapter 12. He says, offer your body as a living sacrifice. Now we don't offer bulls and cows on altars. We are offering ourselves as living sacrifices. The other work of the priest was divine consultation. The priest used to tell the country on how we will go, the nation of Israel. This is the way the Lord directs us. This is what we will do. Yeah? They used to give the interpretation of what God was speaking in the Torah. That's what the priest used to do. But today God has called you a priest. And this is what God says in the, Jesus says in the book of John chapter 14. The person who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who really loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by the Father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The priest's work was to reveal God's will to the people. Today, God is revealing himself to you. Praise the Lord. That's why the curtain was cut into two. The priest had to enter once a year to offer a sacrifice for his sins. Today, enter. The Bible says, come with boldness into the, into the, seat, into the mercy seat of the Lord. Approach the seat with boldness. God is right there with you. He's not secluded somewhere. The curtain was not cut so that we can go in. It's so that God can come to us. Now you don't have to go. If you call, he's present. He's there with you. The priest has the responsibility of declaring the blessing over the people. We still do that today. Because God has given authority. That's why he says he has given some to be apostles, pastors, evangelist, teachers for the edification of the body so that we may come to the stature of Christ. So there is a responsibility given to the body and people given the mandate by God to do so. But today, the blessing of God is with you. Amen? We are just affirming the thing that God has already given you. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, it says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. How much is all? 
How much is all? He has blessed us with all. So stop looking for blessings. They have already been given, but have they manifested? That's why we are here to instruct you on how to get those things. Amen? That's why we do church. The priest also carried out numerous administrative roles, including collecting tithes, maintenance of the temple, the blowing of trumpets. Let me tell you, there are battles you will never win unless you operate in the office of a priest. Praise the Lord. I don't know if you have ever operated, you have entered the office of a priest. But there is a reason why scripture says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You, there are some things you have to enter the office of a priest. Joshua, when they crossed over the Jordan, this is what, in, before they even crossed the Jordan, this is the instruction God gave Joshua. Get priests. Let them carry the ark. Let them go before the people. And when they step on the water, the Jordan will split. And the waters will stand still. That was the instruction. If there were no priests, I don't know what Joshua would have done. That's why as a child of God, there are moments you will have to operate in your rightful office of a priest. Many people, the reason we have to run to pastors is because they are the people who have activating, functioning in the office of a priest, but the believers have not. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before the Jericho, who was blowing the trumpets? Priests. Who carried the ark? Priests. There is a reason. There are some walls that will not come down. I know some of us have spoken to walls, but they're still looking at you. <laughs> you have to enter. It's not the people. And there's a reason why God separated the priesthood of Levi to serve him in his house. Because they were supposed to be consecrated to him. Those guys couldn't even bury their dead. Couldn't be in one room with a dead person. That's, that's how much consecration was. But then God, we don't have to do the rituals. God has given us the priesthood. We just take the authority because Jesus has completed the work. Amen? In that last portion of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 22, the Lord will not abandon his people. For his great name's sake, because the Lord has been pleased to make you a people for himself. Moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by ceasing to pray for you. This is the work of a priest. That's why the New Testament is full of scriptures. Pray for your leaders yeah, that they may live in peace. Yeah. The scripture says pray in every season, out of season. Pray with all manner of prayer, supplication intercession, you know, everything. He keeps telling you, pray, pray. This is one of the greatest works of a priest, and this is the work that Christ Jesus has left for us. As the royal priesthood, our job is to pray. I don't know how many of you are given to prayer. You are given to prayer. You exercise the office of a priest by prayer. Samuel is telling the children of Israel, you guys have sinned, but me, I will not join you guys in sinning by not praying for you. He had a right to say, mm, Lord, why should I pray for these ones? Hmm? They, they have chosen the wrong thing. They didn't even consult. They should have asked before they asked. They, they, they decided what they want. He said, I will pray for you, whether you deserve it or not. Whether you qualify or not. Whether I feel like or not, I will pray for you because this is the work of a priest. 
He had entered the priestly office. You know, Samuel was in such a unique position because Samuel came before the kings. Samuel operated in the office of a prophet, a priest, and like a king, where the judges were. He was the transition from judges to kings. And he understood something. We can only say this is the man who stood squarely in the two offices of a priest and a king. And the Bible gives an example of another man that is Melchizedek. He says the, priest, the priesthood that he, God has given us is in the line of Melchizedek. That's what Jesus had to take. You see, God had ordained priests to come from the tribe of Levi, but Jesus did not come from the tribe of Levi. Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. And for that to happen, God had established a pattern before. That there is a man that arose that was a king and a priest. That's why he took offerings. He, he took tithes from Abraham. That's why the Bible says even Levi gave tithes because he was not born through. So even the priest that used to collect tithes gave through Abraham the tithe. So Jesus, when he comes, he takes over the lineage of Melchizedek, the priesthood without beginning and without end. That's where you are. Now that you're following after Christ, this is the kingly priesthood. Without beginning, without end. But in this priesthood, we have to be given to prayer. We cannot negate. It is interesting that Samuel says, I will not sin. <laughs> that is a very interesting you know prayerlessness is almost like sin you know, you know there are things in the bible <laughs> I tell you what, if you are a priest and you are prayerless I think you are sinning it's the same way God told you know God has let's stand up on our feet God has very many interesting things in the scripture the priest's work was to give offering and offering and sacrifices were one of the most important things that could happen in the Old Testament. As in, without sacrifices, there was no pardon of sin. God, people wouldn't seek God for direction for the next year. But in the Old Testament, twice, he said, I do not delight in sacrifices. Guys, are all, he has demanded sacrifices. But he says... I don't delight in sacrifices. The reason Saul was rejected is because he spared what God was destroying to sacrifice. Praise the Lord. He spared what God had rejected to sacrifice to the Lord. And God is saying, it doesn't matter what you're doing for sacrifices. I don't delight in sacrifices. That's why he was rejected. David in Psalms, is it 53 or 51? He says... You do not delight in sacrifices. Otherwise, I would have given you sacrifice. But a contrite heart and a broken spirit, you will not despise. What is a contrite heart and a broken spirit? It's someone who is able to humble. The reason why God chose David over Saul is because David understood some principles that went beyond what was practiced. Praise the Lord. Go beyond what people practice. People say, ah, tutaomba, tukikula, tukilala. <laughs> Go beyond. You know? Go beyond. Follow the spirit of the living God. And he will lead you. But to Samuel, lack of prayer, not praying for the children of Israel, was sin. Let me ask you, you are members of Rock West, how many times have you prayed for this church? Do you pray for this church? Do you pray for the pastors? Do you pray for leaders? Do you pray for this nation? I know Pastor Don stood here and told us, man, speak a prayer. How many of us even got those flags we were told to get? Aki, learn your examination. Three, four, five. We didn't. Because it was just a statement that was given. Let me tell you, for you to move to the next level, to operate in your kingship, there are some things you have to do differently. To enter into your place of authority. To enter into your place of authority where you can offer 
living sacrifices before God. There are some things you have to do. Amen? So I want us to take a few minutes. Come on. Noah, give me some, give me some strings or something. Just to take a few minutes. As we have said, this is how we take the kingly office. Is receiving what Jesus has given us. It is already provided for. And some things I have told you have to contend for. I want you to take a minute and contend for that which is yours. There is a kingly grace and an anointing that God has given you. Wherever you are. To take access of it, you have to start in prayer. Take that office of the priest and declare some things into your life. Declare some things done. And declare a new season. This is how you enter into that place. You have to declare. Come on, speak it out. Hallelujah. Let's pack it something as the worship team leads us in worship. And the Lord will bless you. Give liberally and give according to the grace that God has enabled you with. Our details for giving on the screen. If you're online, they're showing, they're attached uh, below the screen. And on the screen, let's give with excellence. Father, we thank you, Lord, for every giver, Lord Jehovah God, every tither, every person that partners with this relationship, my Father. We declare they are blessed. And what the Lord has blessed cannot be cast. Therefore, Lord Jehovah God, we rebuke the enemy that comes to attack, O Jehovah God, the things of the righteous. And we declare they shall experience your peace in every direction. In the name of Jesus. That, O oh Jehovah God, the windows and the uh, heavens will be open over them, my Father. That you may pour a blessing that they have no place to hold, my Father. That is beyond their capacity, O oh Jehovah God Almighty. We thank you, Lord, because prosperity is their portion. They will never lack in their homes, in their businesses. Doors will open, my Father. In their employment, promotions will come in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak favor in the name of your son, Jesus. Do we pray, trust, and believe? Amen. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You're blessed. God bless you. Have a lovely week, Sunday afternoon. And have a blessed week full of grace. And invite someone as we come next Sunday. Amen. God bless you all. See you next Sunday.